Hello, and welcome to NC State's General Chemistry Labs. This is our new pipetting video. It's a new video because we used to use the rubber bulb filler in our videos for pipetting, which students sometimes found a little bit challenging. We're now switching to these syringe fillers. The green one is good for volumes up to 10 milliliters. The red one is good for volumes up to 25 milliliters. In general, the same principles apply for filling with either type of bulb. Our older lab videos contain the bulb filler, which we will eventually replace with the appropriate syringe filler. Let's start by working with a 20 mil volumetric pipette, which means I'm going to use the red filler. The 20 mil volumetric pipette has a line right here which indicates precisely 20.00 milliliters. I'll now demonstrate how to use this. First, never pipette directly from the stock bottle. I will take some of my solution and pour it into a clean, dry beaker. As with any pipette, it's necessary to condition first with your stock solution before dispensing your desired volume. Now, if I were using the rubber filler, I would make a loose connection here so that I could very quickly switch from the bulb to my finger. It's not necessary to do that with these syringe fillers. I'm going to place the filler firmly on the end of this pipette, place it in the stock solution, and roll with my thumb downward to draw up a little bit of volume. Now I'm going to come over here on top of the waste beaker and remove this, place my finger on it. And now I can tip this and very gently wash the inside of the bowl with my stock solution and tip it a little more to get toward the fill line and rinse it around and then dispense this in my waste container. I want to do this two more times to make sure that the inside of my volumetric pipette has been coated with only the stock solution. Now it's time to fill to 20 milliliters. So I'll go into my stock solution. Again, make a very firm connection and using my thumb roll downward in order to draw the liquid up. Now, you may overshoot a little bit. It's important to keep the tip of the pipette in the liquid and use the roller to adjust so that you get to the point where the bottom of the meniscus is precisely at the fill line. When making any volume measurements, it's important to measure from the bottom of the meniscus while looking at the line at eye level. Now that I have my appropriate volume, I can take this and I want to wipe the outside of the pipette, but make sure you don't get the actual drops on the tip or else you'll adjust your volume to less than you intend. Here is my volumetric flask and I will place the pipette tip in the flask and now I take this lever right here and I press it to release the fill and the liquid.
You may notice when I'm finished, there's a slight amount of volume in the tip. That's fine. You don't need to blow that out because volumetric pipettes are calibrated to have a tiny amount of volume in the tip when you're finished dispensing. Now I can go on with making my solution. Now, of course, if you need to do another 20 mils for a different solution, you're going to have to reset your pipette by pressing down the plunger. Also, when you're putting the pipette filler onto your pipette, if you're going to exert a lot of pressure in order to put it on the end, try not to do it when it's in the solution. You don't want to accidentally put in too much force and knock it over. We're now going to switch to the serological pipette, which is up to 10 milliliters of volume and the green pipette filler. Now, serological pipettes have a double ring around them. That means that if we're going to dispense a particular volume, we need to actually blow out the bottom of the syringe to dispense the proper amount of volume. You may also notice that there are two graduated scales on this serological pipette. One scale starts at the bottom with 10 and the top at zero, if you were thinking about filling it. There's another scale that starts at 10 right here and goes down to zero at the bottom, which you might use to measure dispensing. There are two ways you can use the serological pipette. If you needed to put two mils of solution into a test tube, say, you could measure your volume from zero to two or one to three, or you could draw up two mils and blow it all out of the tip. So you have two options with the serological pipette measuring by difference or using the scale and blowing out the solution. Let's say that I need one mil, two mil, and three mil of my stock solution in these test tubes. Once again, I'm going to place my filler very firmly on the end of my pipette. For speed, let's say that this pipette has already been conditioned. You, of course, if you were using it in the lab, would condition it first, but I will get right to filling. Once again, I'm going to roll downward with my thumb. And I will get precisely to 0, 0.00 milliliters. Now, if I put it in this test tube, I can now, instead of ruling downward, rule upward. And here is one mil. I can move to the next test tube, in which I want two mils. So I will go from one to three, again, ruling upward. and reading at the bottom of the meniscus. And now I can go to my last test tube. I'm at three mils, so I will go from three to six mils. And I'm a little bit over on that one. Obviously, I can't take it back up. So I will make that 3.05 milliliters when I document my data for my calculations. Now, let's say in the last test tube I want 4 milliliters. I'm going to do this one using the graduation on the side, which go directly at 4 milliliters. So, I'm going to roll downward to draw up my liquid to make sure I am precisely at 4 mils at the bottom of the meniscus. There we go. 
And now I can bring it to this test tube. And I'm going to press on the release to let it go in. And you notice there's a little bit of liquid in the bottom. So in order to get the, all of that into the solution, I need to let go of the release and press on the plunger. And there I have emptied my serological pipette and dispensed exactly four mils. Finally, when you are done with the experiment, make sure to clean out the pipette with deionized water. We take the pipette, place it over the waste beaker, and use our squirt bottle to rinse all around. Give it a little shake, and you're done. When you leave stock solution in the pipette, Often the water dries out, leaving crystals, and that means the pipette needs to undergo rigorous cleaning before its next use. We hope you enjoy your labs using our new syringe pump fillers.